Yeah, Tommy Fury beat Jake Paul, didn't he? It was fucking dead, man. You know, I'm so glad I didn't pay £20 for that, you know. Just holding and just swinging and missing. And, you know, Jake Paul, he was trying to land that right hand, you know, that he landed on Tyron Woodley, but he just didn't land it at all, did he? He just, he was just swinging away. You know, Jake Paul, he tried to like put out a few little promotional pad workout videos, you know, of him throwing some little fancy combinations, but, you know, the fucking pad man was a stud there, wasn't he? You know, Tommy Fury, he was like trying to move around, you know, like his brother Tyson Fury. So it's all right looking decent on the pads and throwing a few little combinations, but, you know, you've got a fucking opponent who's moving around. So, you know, pads, it's not realistic, is it? You know, even when Jake Paul landed that jab and put Tommy Fury down, he was like looking at the floor, wasn't he? Jake Paul, he don't know the basics of boxing, you know, the fundamentals. You know, Jake Paul, he was trying to say, oh, I'd beat Canelo, you know what I mean? And Carl Froch. Imagine that, even like a 47-year-old Carl Froch would mess up Jake Paul. Carl Froch, the four-time world champ. You know, Canelo, the four, five-weight world champ. Imagine what they would do to Jake Paul, you know, and he's like calling him out, you know, saying that he thinks he would beat them. You know, and he couldn't even beat Tommy Fury, who probably won't even win a British title. You know, trying to charge us 20 quid for that. And like Jake Paul, you know, in the press conference afterwards was talking about a rematch. No one's going to fucking pay 20 quid to watch that shit again. I say that, but like some people just follow hype. They're easily influenced, aren't they? You know, buying that little prime bottle. You know, I've joined TikTok in it and there's like loads of women, you know, dancing with a little prime bottle in the background. So people just follow trends. People are like sheep, aren't they? They just follow whatever's trending. You know, going to that Wakey Wines in Wakefield, you know, to buy a bottle of prime so they can have a little photo with it. You know, hoping that KSI talks about the fucking bottle of prime that they've purchased. You know, desperately hoping to go viral. So... Some people probably would pay for the rematch, but it's not worth it, man. It was fucking dead, man. Just holding and just swinging and missing. And it was a flop, wasn't it? And like Jake Paul was saying, oh, I think I'd beat McGregor, you know, in a UFC fight. You know what I mean? It's stupid, isn't it? You can't even beat Tommy Fury. You know, you've been boxing for years now and you can't even beat Tommy Fury, who probably won't even get to British title level. So how are you going to fucking beat McGregor? You know, with those takedowns and shit like that, the kicks, the elbows, all that shit. How are you going to beat him? You know, and he tried to say that he's got a bit of wrestling experience, you know what I mean? Saying he used to wrestle with his brother Logan Paul, you know, because his brother Logan Paul had a little wrestling background. So he's trying to like live off his brother Logan Paul's little bit of wrestling experience. You know, trying to act like he's fucking capable of doing it himself. You know, against Conor McGregor in the octagon. It's just silly talk. But you know, his little young audience of naive little kids, they might fall for it. You know, and they might pay, you know, to see him fight in the fucking UFC. But you get fucking batted by McGregor. I don't know why he's saying he's got a chance of beating him. You know, in the octagon, like he said, he's got a chance of beating Canelo. You know what I mean? And Carl Froch, just stupid talk, isn't it? And you can't even beat Tommy Fury. You know, Drake, he put like 400,000 pounds or dollars on Jake Paul, you know, to beat Tommy Fury, but... You know, Drake, he ain't got a clue, man, about fighting, has he? You know, he put a $1.4 million bet on Israel Adesanya, you know, to beat that guy, and Adesanya got fucked up. So this little Drake guy, he ain't got a clue, man. You know, he's just chucking money on any old shit, and that's what he did with Jake Paul. That Drake, he was trying to get behind Joshua as well, wasn't he? And we've seen how Joshua turned out. We've seen how Joshua ended up. You know, getting fucked up by Ruiz and Usyk. So this little Drake guy, he's fucking silly, man. He ain't got a fucking clue about fighting. He's just putting money on anybody. 
you know, he put money on Jake Paul, didn't he? Jake Paul was just fucking garbage, you know, in his fight with Tommy Fury. You know, the whole build-up was garbage as well, you know, the little press conferences and stuff like that in Saudi Arabia. There's no atmosphere, is there? There's no, there's no vibe, you know, because you're not allowed alcohol in fucking Saudi Arabia. You know, there was no little ring card girls, you know, running around in their little outfits. So there was no like sexual appeal. There was just fucking nothing, man. You know, those Saudis, they were like clapping, you know, after every round. You know, they're really respectful, aren't they? But it's just, I don't know, it's just not really, it's not really a good environment, is it? We want to see ring card girls, you know, we want to drink alcohol. We want to fucking chuck beers at fucking Tommy Fury and Jake Paul, you know, when they were boxing like that. I don't know who paid £20 for that, but it's, it wasn't worth it at all, was it? You're better off finding like a little dodgy stream, you know, to save a few quid. I was looking forward to it because I thought that Jake Paul might catch Tommy Fury, you know, with that right hand that he caught Tyron Woodley with, but he didn't. He was a swinging, you know, even when he put Tommy Fury down with a jab, he was like looking at the ground, wasn't he? Jake Paul, he's got no boxing IQ at all. He needs to just fuck off back to the Disney Channel. Because he's not cut out for boxing, man. He's not, is he? Calling out Carl Froch and Canelo. Imagine what they would have done to him. They would have fucking really messed him up. They would have fucked him up, Jake Paul. But yeah, disappointing. It was a disappointing weekend on a whole, you know, for boxing. You know, Mayweather. He was trying to sit on the ropes, you know, trying to make it all entertaining. But I think there was about a thousand people in the crowd. There was hardly anybody there. The seats were empty. You know, Mayweather, I think he's just, you know, back in the days when he was fucking up Arturo Gatti and people like that, you know, messing him up and, you know, fucking up people like Canelo, you know, Mayweather. I used to like those Mayweather 24-7 documentaries as well. You know, and he told his dad to get out of his gym. <laughs> That was like prime Mayweather on it. That was really entertaining. But you know, seeing him like in these little exhibitions, fucking dancing and you know, pissing about, it's it's no good, is it? There was no hype at all, you know, for Mayweather's fight on the weekend with that little Geordie Shaw guy. It was fucking shit, man. I like the old Mayweather, you know, when he used to, you know, pretend to eat like junk food, you know, when he used to go through the little drive through and he used to pretend, you know, to be eating junk food, like close to a fight. But then when the camera cut out, Mayweather would spit out the junk food. So Mayweather was like pretending, you know, to eat junk food, you know, trying to create a little interesting documentary. But I kind of fell for it. I was really intrigued by Mayweather back in them days. But these little silly exhibitions, you know, against people like Dead G. I don't know, it's not really doing it for me at all, man. You know what I mean? It's, I think he's kind of... Because like, I, when I think about Mayweather now, it's like I'm starting to think about these little silly exhibitions. You know, where there's like 1,000 people in the crowd. It's like I'm thinking about that initially. You know, when I think about Mayweather, I'm not thinking about his, you know, his performances against Canelo or fucking Arturo Gatti. You know, and it's similar with Roy Jones, in it? I don't think about his great performances back in the day. You know, when he used to fuck about and just throw those fast combinations. I don't really think about that kind of Roy Jones. I think about him getting fucked up by Glenn Johnson. You know, people like Enzo Macronelli. So Mayweather, I think he needs to just fuck off, man. You know what I mean? You can say it's easy money, but how much money does he need, though? Like, how much money does he need, man? It's getting boring, isn't it? There was hardly anybody there. I hardly heard anybody speaking about his fight on the weekend with that little Geordie Shaw guy. You know, it's just time for Mayweather to fuck off, isn't it? But it's up to him, innit? But this little fight here with Jake Paul and Tommy Fury, it was just shit, man. I didn't enjoy it at all. There was nothing there, you know what I mean? But yeah, Jake Paul, man, he fucking disappointed me. I kind of wanted him to win. 
I wanted him to beat Tommy Fury. I wanted him to fucking knock him out. But in a way, I'm kind of glad that Jake Paul lost because he tried to like this Andrew Tate, didn't he? He tried to jump on the Andrew Tate hate bandwagon. You know what I mean? Saying, oh, he's a human trafficker. Even though this fucking Jake Paul himself got accused of grape, you know, by some little fucking woman who was trying to slander his name, you know, for financial reasons. She was trying to jump on the Me Too hype. You know what I mean? And she got exposed. And Jake Paul got exonerated, you know, and the fucking charges got dropped. But he's still trying to have a go at Andrew Tate saying, oh, he's a human trafficker. So these guys, man, these guys are like little puppets, man. You know, Jake Paul, he's like a little fucking corporate, little fake, little cunt, isn't he? So I'm kind of glad he got beat, you know, for trying to jump on the Andrew Tate hate bandwagon. You know, with his brother Logan Paul, they were trying to jump on the Andrew Tate hate bandwagon. But Andrew Tate, he's done more for fucking men than these two guys here. You know, he tries to uplift men, you know, tries to encourage them to fucking get in shape. You know, get your money on point. You know, not simp for women and be desperate and struggle sexually. You know, become a high value man. You know, so women come to you. So you're not fucking struggling sexually and simping over fucking women on OnlyFans like Michelle Horphelps and these other fucking women. You know, he's a bit snidey, isn't he, that Jake Paul? He's a bit of a snide. So I'm glad Jake Paul lost in a way. Kind of glad he got fucking beat by this little Tommy Fury. You know, and Jake Paul was saying in the press conference afterwards, oh, during camp, I was a bit ill. You know, I felt a bit fucking under the weather. You know what I mean? You know, making excuses. You know, like a fucking Eubank. You know, saying, oh, Liam Smith, he fucking elbowed me. He used his forearm. Or that kind of bomb saying, oh, I've had a load of eggs. Yeah, it's, it's all down to the eggs. You know, coming up with these little silly excuses. Just take your fucking L. Like a man, you know what I mean? Stop making excuses. But that's what that Jake Paul was doing. You know, in the press conference afterwards, he was saying, oh, I was sick. I was ill. You know, I had a bit of a temperature. I had a bit of a fucking runny nose. It's just clown talk, isn't it? Just accept that you got beat by Tommy Fury, who probably won't even win a fucking British title. Maybe even an area title, you know, against a, a good opponent who really wants it. Just take the L, man, and stop trying to blame your fucking loss on a little runny nose. And a little high temperature. You know, it's desperate, isn't it? He's reaching out for an excuse, you know, to try and justify the rematch. You know, so he can get a load of young, silly, little, naive kids to get their parents to fork out another fucking 20 quid. You know, for the rematch against Tommy Fury. You know, he's a bit of a flop, wasn't he? He's a bit of a flop, man. You know, even Derek Cesaro being there, you know what I mean? What's he doing there? He was trying to hang around, wasn't he, Cesaro? You know what I mean? What's he doing? Yeah, what's he about? What's he doing, man? He's... He's trying to live off that little thing that he said to Dillian White in it, Cesar. You know, and he said to Dillian White, you know, when you take those little pills and they go through you and you need to quickly go to the toilet, that's how I'm going to go through that man. You know what I mean? And Dillian White said, that's a bit of a weird analogy. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, man. But that's what Cesaro is known for, isn't it? That little comment about the laxatives. You know what I mean? That's what he's known for. Or chucking water on Dillian White. That's like the peak of his career. That's his highlight, isn't it? But over the that, it's nothing else, man. And he's trying to hang around in Saudi, you know, getting that oil money off those fucking Arabs. You can't blame him. You know, he's cashing in. He's getting paid but I just don't know why they fucking bought him on board like what for but yeah whatever man whatever the show was a bit of a flop it was a bit disappointing wasn't it it was a bit of a anti-climax but I thought I'd do a quick video about it you know just giving it a little review they weren't really much to review to be honest but 
I just thought I'd chuck in a quick video, you know what I mean? And just whatever, but thanks for tuning in again, yeah? Thanks for that.